Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. COVID update, December 21st, 2020. Uh, happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Jackie Williams, tomorrow. Uh, 29 or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, COVID update, lots of cases in Oklahoma, 4,900 on Sunday. I think about 2,900 today. I think we're at 265,000, 20, approaching 2,300 deaths. So lots and lots of cases. Uh, so again, masks, for those of you who don't believe in masks, don't wear masks, you can get COVID. And since there's almost no hospital beds, you can see what happens when you don't get care. But for those of you who wanna try to limit your exposure, I think masks would be a great idea. And I can't really emphasize enough how important it is to be doing the supplements now. Um, we're in the midst of, some people think it's the third wave. I kind of think it's the second wave because the first two kind of blended, but were prolonged. But either way, there's the most cases we're going to have is going to be in the next two months. So what do you need to do? You need to do your zinc. If you've been on it regularly for more than two months every other day, you need to do your vitamin D, five to 10,000 units a day, depending how much you weigh. I've gone over this many times. You need to do fish oil. The blood clotting data is worse and worse. It has to do with interferon gamma going up and blah, blah, blah. There's a whole bunch of basic inflammatory science stuff. But the bottom line is COVID, if you get it, you're at a significant elevated risk for blood clot temporarily. So fish oil, fish oil, fish oil. You need to be on melatonin. Melatonin interrupts the inflammatory cascade, one to two milligrams. Um, the fish oil is about 1,500 milligrams, roughly, with a ratio of EPA to DHA of three to one. And then a multivitamin. So that's your core stuff. You need to do it. 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 I can't say it enough. But if you get COVID, what should you do? Well, if you're mildly symptomatic, you know, take your vitamins. You do the zinc pulse, which we've talked about a ton of times. You take uh, about 150 milligrams over three to four hours. If you're a bigger person, 200 milligrams over three to four hours or five hours. You then take two days off and do it again. That's going to knock down the virus most of the time. But, you know, some people get sick and sick and sick. So we've used a lot of different things. We've used Plaquenil. We've used Dexamethasone. We've used... Um, z packs or ciprofloxin and doxycycline. I think the best program now, which is the one where we've, I've used a little bit um, in the months past, but I got so much ridicule for talking about ivermectin back in March, and I just dropped it as a subject, even though I knew it was going to work. And lo and behold, now it's clearly defined as the gold standard strategy, you know, because it's all about reading literature and understanding how it works and how science works. So ivermectin, if you take it with your with an infection, uh, the preliminary data, but it's good data out of India, it's, it's a 99% reduction in hospitalization. It's ivermectin with doxycycline. So that's the combo to ask for baseline care. If you start having lung problems, you wanna add a, a steroid dexamethasone. You probably wanna add um, also potentially, but you're already on doxycycline, God willing, um, and then maybe a pulmacort inhaler because that's bedinazide uh, as an inhaler. So um, that's basically what we do. Treated a ton of people over the last week and a half or week, week and a half with that ton, more than 10, less than 20. Everybody got better within uh, 24 to 48 hours, but everyone could tell an improvement pretty quickly. Um, that's definitely, I think, the thing I've noticed when you compare it to the hydroxychloroquine to the ivermectin, the response is even faster and the tolerability is even greater. So I definitely think that's the way you should go, whether you believe me or don't believe me. It's immaterial to me. I'm the one who has to write for it and take responsibility. So that's how I would treat you. Um, uh, ivermectin also is really good for prophylaxis. The Indian studies an 83% reduction if you take it um, at point A and then repeat it at 72 hours. And you can stay on that every 72 hours and it reduces your risk if you are continually exposed by 83%. So that's all really good data. Um, can't emphasize it enough. So, but if you... Uh, then you know, the next subject is vaccine. So messenger RNA vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine's been out now for about a week. The Moderma vaccine's going to be out any day now. It's approved. We I don't know if we have any in Oklahoma yet. We maybe we're supposed to be getting doses any second. So I'll have a better idea about that tomorrow when I have a conference call.
with the state health department. So I'll update everyone in the next day or two. So messenger RNA vaccines, the first thing to know about them is there's not a syringe full of microchips going into your body. Yeah, people have all these conspiracy theories about these vaccines. And so the first thing, if they could put microchips in a syringe that, and give you an injection and then they could monitor you, they wouldn't need to do that because the technology would be so advanced. Why would they waste their time injecting everyone? Just put it in the air and we'll breathe it in. I mean, geez, people who are worried, I'm just like, oh my God. I mean, things to worry about. Could it increase your autoimmune disease rate? We don't know yet. The, the Pfizer and Moderma vaccines have been specifically of, uh, designed to help avoid that. So that's a good thing. Um, the double-blinded randomized controlled trial on the Pfizer vaccine, I'll post the graft. I mean, it's a 95% reduction and the breakpoint is 10 days. At 10 days, essentially 85% of people are immune to the virus. Um, you get a second dose at 21 days and after, by the 28th day or seven days past the second dose, we're at 95%. The Moderma data is even better or equal to or better. Um, again, anaphylaxis, they are having an allergic reaction to the vaccine is always possible. The trend is for that to be in people who already are severely allergic to stuff. I recommend to everyone that has the opportunity to get the vaccine now or in the future, take Benadryl the night before and Benadryl an hour before. I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you're a high-risk candidate, you absolutely should do it. I wouldn't mess around. It's silly to mess around. We are not gonna have the hospital beds. Look at Southern California. They have, I mean, they're having who knows how many deaths because there's not enough beds for the COVID patients. There's not enough beds for the car accident patients. There's not enough beds for the um, heart attack patients. So you know what? You don't wanna get COVID. You also don't wanna do anything really stupid right now and risky that you could hurt yourself. So I mean, there's enough accidents already, so just be smart. So I think the vaccine looks like a good thing. Is it the best thing ever? Who knows? We don't know. But when you're looking at um, basically an ongoing pandemic and we have a pretty great solution scientifically, the messenger RNA vaccines seem to be very, very safe. We don't know for sure. But again, we would recommend it if we had a lot of other choices. It's probably going to go down as probably one of the greatest accomplishments in um, science to have made this vaccine in 10 months, but we'll see. It's too bad we missed the easy stuff like social distancing and, and masks that wouldn't really help, but it is what it is. So that's really the summary. I, I think I, I would use the vaccine if you get the opportunity to get it. Um, if you're in a second, third, or fourth tier, meaning let's say you're 42, you're healthy, and you're thin, you have no medical problems, you're not going to get the vaccine till March. So the bottom line is this, you're going to see tens of millions of people get it before you and see what happens. But the number one thing is the anaphylaxis. Um, so that's pretty, the pretty much the summary, Kim. Am I missing anything tonight? Supplements, 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 socially distanced, masks. Um, Call your doctor if you get sick or your provider. God willing, they'll write for something for you. Um, try to avoid going to the hospitals. They're overwhelmed. And those people are, again, you need to pray for the nurses and the doctors and the respiratory therapy people and everyone, a clerical at these hospitals who are just, you know, giving it their all because they're not going to get any relief for two months. So let's all pray for them. Anyway, Merry Christmas. I'll talk to you again in the next day or two.